Welcome to the High Bandwidth Word Podcast, transformative studies in the Word of God. I'm Pastor John Harris, and this is my podcast. Looking forward to this new season of studies. We're going to be opening the book of Hebrews and studying it chapter by chapter, verse by verse. This is an exciting book about the new covenant and the Lord Jesus Christ and all that He is. Grab your Bibles, grab your notebooks, and let's get ready to go. Fight the good fight of faith. Hebrews chapter 2. So in Hebrews chapter 2, verses uh, 5 through 8, which we just sort of uh, looked at last week, um, the, the, there was a statement here about man, like, you know, that God has placed, uh, brought in, put in subjection the things, the, the things of creation uh, through man. <clears throat> but at the end of verse 8, it says this, but now, the last sentence of verse 8 says, Hebrews 2, verse 8, but now we see not yet all things put under him. So it hasn't happened yet, right? Adam was put on the earth to subdue the earth, right? The body of Christ, we're going to have new bodies, right? Right, we have new bodies. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, it says, those new bodies have this, cap- you know, this, the, this characteristic, right? It says, I'm, I'll read it because I'm going to mess it up. Philippians 3, verse uh, 20 says, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ who shall change our vile body, this body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby, it's the functionality of what it is, he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So we have a, we're going to have a new body that allows us to subdue, bring under control heavenly places, because that's where our conversation is, that's where our home is, that's where we call home, okay? And that's why we're looking forward to that, uh, that day that we're, we're in his presence. Hebrews 2 again, verse 9. But now we see something about Jesus. Okay, so it was but man. Here's some things, but now but Jesus. But Jesus, he has taken, you know, it wasn't underneath, you know, man, man hasn't done it yet, but Christ has, is what's going to be the, the passage here is talking about. But we see Jesus, I'm going to read just a couple of verses. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto the brethren in the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. For as much as then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. All right, that's an awful lot, and I know that's an awful lot. So we're going to break it down and, and, and go through it and see some, some things here. Again, as we go through the book of Hebrews, it's going to sound like stuff that's for the body of Christ, right? And the reason is why. Why does it sound like a lot of these things, you know, similar things that we have as members of the body of Christ? Okay, yeah, so like, so the issue is it has to do with we're in Christ, right? They're in, for, we're in, actually, we're going to see that today, that they're in Christ, right? You're in Christ, but you're in the body of Christ. That's the, as Pastor Aaron says, the agency that, that God is using today, and it's the agency or the organization or the organism that God's going to use in heavenly places. Israel and those of the kingdom saints, they're in Christ, but they're not in the body of Christ. Their agency, their, how God's going to use them, is to the nation of Israel. But they're in Christ, so the blessings and, 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 and the things that God produces in, in, the, in the believers is similar. Okay, they have, you know, because Christ is producing fruit. They're, the Holy Spirit, they're given the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. It's how God interacts with us and, and, and teaches us. Well, it's similar for them, right? So it's going to seem similar, but it's not. I mean, it's different. It's vastly different when you deal with what's going on. However, it's incredibly the same when you're in Christ, right? Um, Hebrews 2, verse 9. So we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, that's called Christmas. We call that Christmas, right? That's when Christ came to the earth, right? He, came, he took on human flesh. Christ, uh, the Apostle Paul says in, in um, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 8, talks about that, that Christ, you know, he was equal with God, right? 
Okay, he was, but he, but he, but he, he allowed himself to be made in the fashion of man, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So he, he, he allowed that to happen. Only Christ was made a little lower. That God made him lower, but Christ allowed it. He gave a choice. He made a choice to allow that to happen. And, it's, and why? Well, so that and lower than the angels, right? And the reason is for the suffering of death. And you know, so why was it? De- why was death needed? To deal with our sin, right? Well, this is, they need to have their, you know, everybody's sin needs dealt with, right? You see, the writer of Hebrews is sharing, well, this is the perspective of, of, of what's going on. It's that Christ, he, he needed to do this for death, right? And then he was crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Okay, just go, let's go back to Philippians 2 for a second. Paul says it this way. Same event, same event, same result. Philippians 2 down in verse 9, verse 8 talks about what he just, I quoted to you. Being found fascist man, he, hum, he humbled himself, became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, because of that, God hath, what? Also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. That's not just to the body of Christ, that's today. That's for all creation, right? And so you'd expect the writer of Hebrews to say something just like that about the nation, because that's what Christ did. He suffered that death, and then he was crowned with glory and honor, and all the creation bows before him. Go to 1 Peter chapter 2, or 3, sorry, 1 Peter 3. Here's Peter. Very different message than Paul's message, right? When it deals with what's going to happen in the future, like where you're going to spend eternity, when it, you know, these things, but very similar message when it comes to what Christ did, because he didn't do it with the same event, same actions, right? But different purposes, depending upon what's happening. First, First Peter chapter 3, verse 22. Who is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, the end of chapter, verse 23 says, By the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is going into heaven, is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being what? Made, Made subject to him. Why? Because he's given a name which is above every name. Paul explains it. He's sort of the explainer of the things that you cannot know any other way. And by the way, the writer of Hebrews was probably affected by Paul. I mean, he read Paul's writings, right? He knew Timothy, right? Right, so, you know, it wasn't that case. So that truth is known. There are, there are large truths about the, what Christ did that, that transcend dispensations. Let me show you one. Go back to Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, talking about judgment, talking about judgment. Start in verse 8, it says, Romans 2, verse 8. But unto them that are, that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish upon every soul of man to do with evil of the Jews first and also of the Greek or Gentiles. But glory and honor and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Talking about, you know, you know work, a good work of salvation in this case. For his, anyways, for his no respect to persons with God, right? And it talks about some dis- different issues. But down in verse 16, it says this. Talking about this day of judgment. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to what? There's a day, all men's sins, all men's secrets, I should say that, are going to be judged by Jesus Christ, according to what? Paul's gospel. Right? Christ died for sin. That's Paul's gospel, right? He died for your sin, my sin. Did he die for Peter's sin? Did he die for David's sin? Okay. He died for all sin, right? Okay. And so that's so when they get, you know, when a person gets to the great white throne judgment in that particular case, for that, that judgment, it's based upon Christ. Stand, who's on the throne sitting there making the judgment? Christ is going to sit on a throne. And he died for that person that came before them, right? He was buried and he rose again, okay, to give righteousness, but they didn't accept it. They didn't find it. So all men said, that's, that's, that's not just you and I, that's every. Now, Christ, there's another secrets of men that are judged, and that's at the Bema seat, right? Do you know everything you've done that God's going to reward? You don't have it tallied, but God's tallied it, right? He's keeping track of it. You don't, you, know, you, don't, you don't know how many gold, silver, and precious stones you've got floating around, right? But you also have some stuff floating around like wood, hay, and stubble, right? Okay? And it's going to be judged, right? And it's going to be judged by my gospel, as, as Christ died for you, he made you righteous. How have you lived that righteous life? 
Israel is the same way. They're going to be judged according to what Christ, that his righteousness. That's the only way anybody's saved, by God's righteousness, given by Christ. Go back to Hebrews chapter 2. Anyways, Christ is crowned above all. He suffered death. He tasted death for every man. Um, it's true, Romans 5, 8, God commended his love towards us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, right? Is that just you and my members of the body of Christ? No, he died for, again, Peter, David, and everybody else. He, you know, that, that's a, that's a, that, that is a truth about all mankind. Read what Romans 5, 8 talks about. Today, however, grace reigns. That's different. Adam plunged us into sin, all of mankind, and grace reigns today in a very special way for us as members of the body of Christ. That's a dispensational thing, but there are things that pass beyond that as well. So anyways, he died for all. Paul says that multiple times. Okay? Hebrews 2. I'm going to read. Um, just going to re so anyways, verse 9 again. Crown with glory, middle of it, and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. The writer of Hebrews is talking about every man, not just members, not just Israel. He's talking about Gentiles around the world. Okay? Now, he's not writing to members of the body of Christ, but it's still truth, that, that it is true about what Christ did. I want to I just uh, take you to, a, well, I wanna just, anyways, go to Acts 2. Hold your place. So you're going to be right there in Hebrews. Go back Acts 2. We're going to look at this, uh, the glory and then this grace. All right? And I want to just do a comparison to you here. Or um, show you a few things. Acts 2, verse 30. Suffering, glory. All right? That's, that's the truth. You know that. Okay? The writer, Peter, Peter said that the prophets of old, you know, they, were, they searched the scriptures diligently to, to, to understand what, what the sufferings of Christ were and the glory that would follow. They tried to understand that. Right? Uh, that you know, and, and so here's a, here's a picture. Acts 2, here's Peter at Pentecost, uh, preaching this message. Therefore being a pro talking about David. Therefore being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Okay? He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. You know, Peter says, we saw it. We're, you know, we've experienced it. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which you now see and hear. The issue is he's now exalted at, 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 at the throne of God. He's, he's in a position of glory, all right? He's, he's, he's what he was, but he was suffered in order to have that experience. You go to 1 Peter Okay, just keep yourself always in Hebrews 2. Go to 1 Peter chapter 3. When they describe the cross, when they describe what Christ did, especially, especially when you get past the early parts of Acts, because in the early parts of Acts, well, in the book of Acts, you find that the description of the cross is accusatory by Peter. Basically, you by wicked hands have crucified him, right? Does Paul ever say, you know, make it accusatory about the cross? No, it's not, right? It's not accusatory. It's basically, it's, it's the power of the cross. It's the, the, good, you know, the, the, the work accomplished by the cross, right? It's, it's the good of the cross, right? But Peter early on. But Peter, after he understands, because, you know, again, I'm not saying Paul taught him anything, but God reveals truth. But also what Paul's giving is truth that transcends dispensation. What happened at the cross? Far more than what Peter saw. Peter's, you know, you by wicked hands crucified him. And you know what? He's alive. You're in trouble. That's Acts chapter 2 and 3. That's Acts chapter 7. You know, Christ, you know, Stephen's standing there and he talks about by, you know, what you've done. And then he's standing there. I see him standing, right? He's bringing it, baby. You guys are in trouble. You know, that's why the, 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 the Israel, the Jews that were there at Pentecost said, men and brethren, what shall we do? You know, and he says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, you know, and, and, and then it talks about, and, you know, being baptized for repentance and, and um, receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, there in Acts chapter 2. Look what Peter says here in First Peter chapter 3, verse 18. It's a little different. He's now understand. Peter's now explaining what happened at the cross. 
Either he got new revelation or he understood what Paul said. Okay, I don't know. I mean, issues, it's the word of God. That's all I know. First Peter 3, it's different than Acts, Acts uh, at Pentecost. First Peter 3, 18, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust. God commends his love towards us, and while you're sinners, Christ died for the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Christ paid for sin, all right? And, and the just for the unjust, and t- so that they might, be, they might be brought to God, right? It's, 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 it's sort of similar. Go to Galatians 2. So let's just see what... So Sean stopped over the house a couple weeks ago, and he wanted to... You know, so like, you know, so how was, you know, how was, how, how was a Jew saved? Or how, how was a person in Israel saved, right? How is... Uh, you know, what, what do they need to do moving forward? You know, what, so what's somebody need to believe in the, in the, during the tribulation? I should say that, right? What do you need to believe? What, 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 what gets you to heaven? Well, what gets you to heaven is Christ. Okay, okay. He is the way, the truth, and the life, right? Our, what's our actions? What's the action we need with Christ? We need to believe that what he did, right, was enough. And to trust him, right? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If you, you know, if Romans 9 or 10 says it in a way that you, you know, believe the heart that Christ is God, that he's, he's, he's God himself, okay, and that he has risen from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans chapter 3, or um, 4, Romans chapter 4 says it this way. Um, this is Paul talking, right? He was um, talking about, verse 24 says, but for, for, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed, talking about righteousness, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus the Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses, and was raised again for our justification. You believe he paid for your sin, right? And he was raised from the dead, right? Got it? Okay. Make sense? All right. That, that's, that's what it takes. It's not about action. It's not about works. It's not about doing anything other than believing what Christ has done. Now, before the cross, to me, that's the bigger question. Because before the cross, they didn't know about Christ's death, burial and resurrection, right? However, I know a guy named Abraham. How was Abraham saved? Faith. He believed what God said, right? He was fully, in fact, that's the, that is the proof that Paul is running through in, Acts, in Romans chapter 4. He's going through Abraham saying, here's, here's reality of what salvation's about. Here's how individuals get righteousness. How do you get it? You can't work for it. Not by works of righteousness we have done, but according to his mercy, he, he saves us. That's Titus chapter 3, right? You know, uh, it's, you know it's, 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 it's not by works. It's by faith. Faith, God, God takes faith and he, in, he, in, he imputes righteousness based on faith. He converts it. He takes your faith and turns it into righteousness. He places that on your account. This is Romans chapter 3 says. Here's Galatians chapter 2. So here's Paul. Again, this I, I always say, if you want to understand what really happens, you go to Paul. Because Paul was given the underlying truth about all the stuff that happened, as well as truth related to the specific agency of the body of Christ. And that we have a new, there's a new body, there's a new organism, there's a new purpose, a new place, you know, a new inheritance. That's, that's the body of Christ. We, you know, we have a, we're going to be serving God in heavenly places. But he also explains what happened at the cross. So Galatians 2, you have a situation where uh, after uh, they go down, Paul goes down, he's like, I don't know, 15 some years into grace now, um, ish. He goes up to Jerusalem, sees the apostles. Uh, they explain to them what he's been doing amongst the Gentiles. All right. This is Acts chapter 15, by the way. And uh, they shake hands, right? Verse 9 says that when James, Cephas, that's Peter, and John, who seem to be pillars, I mean, they seem to be the, the people that are running the show there in Jerusalem, perceived the grace that was given unto me, he gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship. They shook hands, that we should go to the heathen, and they under the circumcision. So there was a, there was a separation. They said, okay, we now understand what God's doing today. And I think it's a little deeper than what you might first read. It's not that they're saying, okay, we're going to go to the unsafe people in the synagogue across the street. He said they went back to Jerusalem. Oh, that's where they were at, by the way. They still were there. And they said, we're going to minister there until God's done with you Gentiles, really. Because, you know, 
they, they basically went into what's called, I call it maintenance mode. Okay? That's why the letters like 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, uh, James, and things, they're written to believers who are just sort of waiting. You know, Peter, you know, Peter in, in 1 Peter, or 2 Peter chapter 3, there are people are complaining, why hasn't Christ come back yet? And he says, well, you need to you know, look to Paul because he has the understanding. God's sort of not willing that any should perish, and he's long-suffering, and, and, uh, and you know, there's some things going on there that, that, you don't, you know, that, are, that are bigger than what he initially said, or God, that he's revealed. It's more than just Israel. God's doing something with the Gentiles today. Anyways, down in verse, um, well, anyways, what happens then, so, you know, Peter or Paul and them go back to Antioch, and, and Peter comes to Antioch, and he's saying, hanging out with Paul, all right? He's, uh, you know, they're fellowshipping, right? Paul, you know, Paul's not a Gentile, by the way, right? You know that? Okay, he's a Jew, okay? Uh, his name is, you know, he's like Paul, you know, but, he, but he's a you know, member of the body of Christ, right? He's first member of the body of Christ. So Peter's okay to hang out with Paul. Jews are okay talking to Paul, but, but Paul was hanging out with Gentiles, and Peter comes up and he hangs out with Gentiles, right? But what happens is, is some folks from James' group come up. These are be- believing Jews, all right? But they believe that you should still keep the law of Moses, right? They haven't got the book of Hebrews yet that explains to them that this, they need to be going under the new covenant, right? Uh, but anyways, uh, Peter separates. It says in verse 14, um, I'm sorry, verse 13 of Galatians 2. And the, other, and the other Jews assembled likewise with him, so, insomuch that Barnabas was also carried away with their dissimulation. Barnabas, who was Paul's faithful fel, fel, you know, fellowship guy who went everywhere with him, right, in the ministry. When Peter separated because these folks from James came up, because they were afraid of him, all right? Why was Peter afraid of James anyways? I thought he was given the keys of the kingdom, right? I mean, he shouldn't have been, he should have been charged. I should start singing this now. Okay, so... Uh, so, so, you know, so it was, you know, it was in charge, but the issue is God had moved on, right? There was a new dispensation going on, okay? There's a lot of things you could pick up from this, but anyways, but Peter separates, Barnabas separates, right? So Peter, or Paul gets into Peter's face, okay? So in verse 14, he says this, but when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, if thou being a Jew live us after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Peter, you're not acting, you know, you're not acting like a Jew anymore. See, you're, you've moved from the law into the new covenant. You're starting to act like the new covenant. You know, Paul, what did Paul call Peter? He was a brother, right? You know, he was, he, was, he, was, he was a brother, right? Different purposes in life, when I say eternal life, okay? You know, body of Christ Israel, right? Peter's gonna sit on a throne, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Paul's not. Paul's going to be in heaven, you know, serving the Lord. I don't know what he's going to do. God hasn't told us, but he's going to, he's going to reign with Christ, right? And you're going to be with him. But anyways, here's an explanation. Verse 15, Paul says this, we who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. So now he's basically stepping back and saying, okay, you know, we're Jews, you know, they're Gentiles, they're sinners, they're dogs, they're uncircumcised. They have, you know, according to the law, they have no hope. There's no, there's nothing that they have from that. It, they got to come to God through Israel, right? Basically, right? He says, this is what we know. Verse 16. Knowing, so here's Paul explaining what the Jews know. Okay, p- believing Jews know. Knowing that a man is not justified by what? Works, Works of the law. But by the faith of Jesus Christ. That's not faith in Jesus Christ. That's the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ's faithfulness. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, right? That we might be justified by the faithfulness, faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. That's true in any dispensation. That's true in any time period. The works of the law never saved anybody, right? Their faith saved them, right? Their faith saved them. They did it. God told them to do it. If they wouldn't have done it, they wouldn't have been faithful, right? They wouldn't have believed God. They wouldn't have been, but they did what God said. That's why Paul says in Romans, hold your place there. Oh, no, hold your place there. Go to Romans 3. Romans 3, verse uh, 28. Again, Paul talks about all dispensations here when he, when he says this. We'll start in verse 25. Actually, verse 24, talking about the work of Christ. 
being justified freely by His grace through the redemption is in Christ Jesus. Christ made a payment, right? His blood, right? Whom God has set forth to be a what? Propitiation, a fully satisfying sacrifice, a hilasterion, a, a mercy seat. Through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. That's, that's, Peter, that, that's, that's before the cross. The people came to God before the cross. Abraham. How did God save Abraham? Well, it's through forbearance. God's, God took care of their sin. He, 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 he um, placed, took the sin and replaced it with righteousness. It was placed under account, but it's through forbearance. That is, there was a debt to be, there was a debt to be paid. Christ was going to pay it, and it became, you know, and God gave him that based upon what he knew he was going to do, I guess. Think of it that way, right? To declare, I say, at this time, so what's God doing today? Well, his righteousness, that he might be just and justify of him which what? Believeth in Jesus. Okay? Whereas boasting then, it is excluded by what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? I think it's interesting. No. Is he not also the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, seeing it is one God, notice this, which shall justify the circumcision, what? By faith, and the uncircumcision through faith. By faith, read Hebrews 11. By faith, Abraham did this. By faith, David did this, right? That is, they, they trusted God. God said, do it, so they did it, okay? Didn't have to make sense to them. They did it, right? We're saved through, through, through faith. For by grace are you saved through faith and not, not yourselves as the gift of God. He's not, you know, there's no, God's not saying, well, you know you need to build an ark. So I build an ark, God. There's no rain. There's no water. There's no, you know, whatever. Right? I'll build an ark out in the woods there, right? Okay, that's what Noah did, right? He just by faith believed what God said and did it, right? Go to Acts 11. Anyway, so it's, they believe in Jesus Christ. I mean, moving forward, by the way, it's Jesus Christ, all right? Look what it says here in Acts 11. So Peter is, is recounting his uh, experience with Cornelius, right? You know, you know what I'm saying, right? Cornelius, right? The, the, he was a Gentile, all right? And God said, go. And Peter says, whoa, all right? I, you know, that's a, that's, a, that's a no, okay? No, no, right? I don't, I, a lot of rhymes there. I just came up with that, right? God said, go to him. Peter says, no, I can't do that. It's, it's against the law, right? And God says, what I make, you know, what I say is good is good. You go do it, right? So Peter said, all right, fine, I'll go. But anyways, he goes, sees this Gentile, and what Peter experiences is, is like shocking. He sees this Gentile get saved. And he makes, and so, and then, so Peter had a few folks with him. They got to go back and tell the folks in Jerusalem. Because, by the way, Gentiles weren't being saved at Pentecost. Otherwise, this story makes no sense. They were just Jews. You know, the church, the body of Christ, didn't begin at Pentecost because it would have only been Jews. And up to this day, you know, Acts 10, still they haven't talked to any Gentiles, right? In fact, you find a conclusion by James is that, oh, by the way, God said we can, you know, Gentiles will be saved. They weren't looking at Gentiles at all. They were annoyed with Paul in some ways what he was doing at initially. Acts 11, verse, uh, say, 13. Actually, we'll just go down to verse 17. Peter's just recounting what went on. He says, verse 15, he says, And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as, as on us at the beginning. Then remember I the word of the Lord, how he, that he said, John indeed baptized water, but you should be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Verse 17, here's what he says then. For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us, who what? Believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. What was I that I could withstand God? He says, he says, what he says, he says, he explains what his experience is, right? What, what, how, how were they saved? They believed on what? The Lord Jesus Christ. They believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, what he's saying is that then God gave them this gift. That's what he did to us. So, basically, that, te that testified that they believed. So then Peter said, We threw water on them. Verse 18 says, When they heard these things, they held their priests and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Wow. I mean, they, were, they were like shocked. Revelation, right? Gentiles can find, you know, be, be saved. The part I want you to see is that what did Peter say was required for salvation? 
He believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. The baptism of the Holy Spirit was not part of salvation. It was a gift given to those who believed. It was a gift given to those who believed. Look what it says in Acts 15. Acts 15. Peter repeats it. I think it's interesting how he says it. All right. So Acts 15 is P Paul. This is Galatians 2. Paul goes down to Jerusalem, takes Titus with him. All right. And Titus is a test case because Titus is a Gentile. All right. An uncircumcised Gentile. All right. And they take him there and, you know, and whatever. But uh, anyways, um, when he goes down there, there's a lot of heat. All right. A lot of issues going on. But in verse 7, you have Peter stand up and basically says, whoa, whoa, let's, let's listen to me, guys. He says, so in Acts 15, verse 7, And when there, there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago, a long time ago, man, like, it's like 10 or 15 years ago now, God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. By the way, so what Peter's saying is that, you remember a long time ago God sent me to a Gentile? And Paul, by the way, is telling him how Gentiles are being saved. By the way, you're 15, minutes, 15 years in now to grace or whatever, or whatever. but anyways, down in Jerusalem, the, those, those apostles, they're still there. They're not going out and pre preaching to Gentiles, all right? Because Peter's trying to explain that I talked to a Gentile one time. That's what he says, right, okay? And, and, it, says there, and it says, by my mouth should hear the word of, of the gospel, and interesting, the gospel there is a little different. It's not the same gospel, but it still has this piece in it. it talks about Christ. It talks about what, you know, if you read what Peter talks about, it talks about Christ is God. Jesus Christ is God. Go back and read what uh, Peter told Cornelius. And after he hears that Jesus Christ is God and that he was delivered, that's when, uh, that's when uh, that Gentile gets saved. Anyways, and God which knoweth the hearts... Bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. So God knows their heart. They believed, right? And so he gave them the Holy Spirit, okay? And he put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Notice what it says. Well, keep on going. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? You, know, you want to put them under the law, but we couldn't even do it. But notice what it says in verse 11. But we believe... That through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, what? Here it is there. You know, Paul's preaching about salvation by grace alone. That's what he's preaching, right? And what Peter says, you know what? We believe that we'll be saved just like they are. You know, it's, it, it's not like they will be saved just like us. That we'll be saved just like them. That the law was a stumbling block. Who said that? Was the law a stumbling block to you or I? In time past, it was a stumbling block to Israel. They stumbled on it because it was the, the, they, they went to the law and said, if we do this, we do this, we do this, God will say, you're good enough, right? And what the law kept on saying was, you can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. you got to come to me by faith, right? Paul explains what Galatians is about. It explains that truth. Anyways, they were saved even as, as, as us, right? As they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, let's see what Christ says, all right? Go to John chapter 3. Now, John chapter 3 is a little larger than soul salvation, but it's still, in order to be, I guess, you know, in order to have the you know, in order to have this experience, you still got to believe. You got to be a believer. John 3, verse 13. Okay, um, verse 13. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. So so the Son of Man comes down. As Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. This is Christ saying, talking this, right? He's saying this. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. All right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He that believeth in him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, right? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now, the gospel's not there, like the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, but it talks about him being lifted up and things like that. But what's there is believing on the Son, believing in him, right? Believing that 
what Israel needs to do to believe that he's the Messiah, that he's the God. Okay? He is the ever, he's, he's the almighty God. He is, he's uh, um, God eternal. He's Jehovah God. Okay? That's what they need to believe. They need to believe he's the Christ, right? That he's the, he's the actual Christ of prophecy. If they believe that, they believe that he's the eternal God, right? And what Christ says, believe on him. Look says over in John chapter 6, believe on the Son. You know, Romans chapter 10, which we like to quote, for, you know, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, right? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, right? Okay, that, in, that, in, in those words, right? John 6, verse uh, 40. John 6, verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Basically, they'll be part of the resurrection, right? Uh, down in verse 47. Uh, Verily, verily, say unto you, he which that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Down in verse uh, 68. Then Simon Peter, this is what, so anyways, um, Christ was talking to Peter specifically here. He says, then Simon Peter, answered, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou, here's what they need, that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. We believe you. We believe who you are. They didn't believe in the, you know, the death, burial, resurrection of Christ at the time, but they believed that he was the Christ, the Messiah, right? Did their, was their faith tested? Did they, did they struggle with it? I mean, after Christ was crucified, they really struggled, right? So the gospel of the kingdom doesn't talk about the death, burial, resurrection of Christ. It talks about the physical setup of the kingdom. That's that good news. That's that gospel. But for them to come to Christ, you know, what does Jesus Christ say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. You got to believe on Him, all right? That's 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 the truth. That's the new covenant truth, all right? That's that's the new covenant. The law is no longer part of it. Paul told us that. What happened to the law? It was abolished. It was nailed to the cross. It's not taken off the cross and given back to Israel. The law has been dealt with. Moving forward, you're moving under the new covenant, all right? Going backwards, the law had something to do with it, but the law didn't save them. They had to believe on they, had to, you know, they had to believe God. When Christ is standing in front of them, they have to believe that He's God. All right, okay. I mean, you know, that's what Peter says, right? That's what Paul says. All right, I'm going to leave you hanging, right? Because uh, we're going to look at some other verses. Uh, but uh, you uh, chew on that a little bit. You be a Berean, okay, um, and 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 check it out, but. You know, I remember Pastor Culp, when he preached, we preached a lot, you know, there was a, we, we preached the difference between the law and grace, right? Okay. And, and the issue is it's that, and I think it's important because there are folks who believe that you got to keep the law, right? Folks, you have to keep the Ten Commandments, and I think that's true. But it's a false comparison because moving forward, it's the law has been dealt with. You need to know that the law existed, but the law is no longer an issue, it's not an issue for Israel. They are not under the law. Book of Hebrews says that. First John says that. They move, they're moving forward, right? It's, they're, they're moving to the new covenant. Christ was preparing them for that, right? He satisfied the law, right? And now that it's satisfied, it's dealt with, all right? It's been, it's been dealt with, and the law has been nailed to the cross, and now the issue is Christ moving forward. There is no way to God except through Christ, all right? There is no way to God except through Christ. He is the way. It's true for you and I, right? Now, that verse isn't written to you or I, but it's still true, right? It's, it's true. He is the way. He's the truth. He's the life. No man comes to the Father by him. Paul says that there's one major between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, right? It's, that, that's Christ. Well, you, you mull on it a little bit. Let's pray. God, roll out. Have, Heavenly Father, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for all you are. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You've been listening to the High Bandwidth Word Podcast, transformative studies in the Word of God. I hope you've enjoyed the study. Please subscribe, like, and comment. This podcast is available on many podcast platforms. Just search on the title. Now, until next time, fight the good fight of faith and God's best to you.